A woman who caused a mistrial in the sentencing phase of this convicted murderer must now spend time of her own in jail. Your actions were as premeditated as a first degree murder. Welcome back, guys. I trust you've been staying safe. Now, this particular true crime story I'm bringing you today is very unique as compared to all the true crime cases I've brought to you on this channel. But before I delve into it, let me just give you a brief background as to how we got here. Now, most, if not all, justice systems across various jurisdictions worldwide at a point in time and depending on the case at hand, might decide to make use of a jury. If you don't know what a jury is, a jury is usually a group of people who will be selected, carefully selected of course, by the justice system to help provide verdict on a case. And usually it's called juror duty. So these individuals, they, are, they, are, they represent the conscience of society, per my layman understanding. That, that is what their selection is supposed to constitute and represent the conscience of society, what the right thinking member of society who also doubles as the peer of the people at the heart of the issue perceives the case to be and objectively would want to give a verdict on it. So there are instances where a unanimous decision will be required. There are instances where a ratio will be will be required to decide on where the case would go, whether guilty or not guilty. And that be, depends on the differences in the justice systems of various jurisdictions. So bringing it back to this case at hand, it involves one such person who was appointed for jury duty. So this was a juror and her name is Kayla De Pena. Now this case is coming to you from Orange County in the United States of America. So Kayla De Pena was appointed for jury duty in a case that involved a man who is accused of unaliving another and is actually being tried to be resentenced to death. But as it will turn out, Kayla De Pena just found herself on the wrong side of the law and is currently going to serve time in prison. I'm sure you'll be wondering, how does one go from being on jury duty to now having to face a judge and has been sentenced to spend some time in prison? Okay, so this is how the whole thing played out. As at October 2023, a court found Kayla De Pena guilty of this particular offense for which she has now been sentenced to spend about six months in jail. But what did she do? Kayla De Pena was one of the jurors who was sitting on the case of Besman Okafor. Now, if you are not familiar with who Besman Okafor is, I'm giving you just a brief background, but I'm going to do a whole episode talking about his crime. But basically, he was sentenced to death earlier um, for unaliving a man in a home invasion, but then the sentencing was overturned by the Florida Supreme Court. And therefore, they needed to sit on the case again because the Supreme Court ruled that death penalty sentences needed to be unanimous. So the jury needed to be unanimous. So therefore, it warranted that they sit on the case again. And this then led to a second trial on which Kayla De Pena was brought in as one of the juries. So it was at this point that they were hoping that they would be able to bring this case to a close. But then, the trial actually ended, the second trial ended, and they were expecting that they've gone through this ordeal and now they could bring finality to this case. Because bear in mind, because the first sentencing was quashed by the Supreme Court and they had to go through a second trial, it meant that the victim's family had to go through the trauma of the trial and reliving the experience of their loved ones passing all over again a second time 
So it was no difficult, it was no easy task. It was very difficult. And bear in mind also that this comes at a cost. It actually cost the state about 200,000 cities, 200,000 dollars, sorry, I quoted my country's currency, 200,000 US dollars to actually see through this trial. And it was expecting to be a normal one as has been for previous cases until juror number 370, Kayla Depena, made a profound declaration. What did she say? Now, Kayla De Pena made a proclamation indicating that she had actually discussed the case with a friend outside of court. Yeah. She had discussed the case with a friend outside of court. Of court. And Kayla De Pena and her fellow jurors had already spent three weeks listening to testimony and six hours in deliberations to arrive at the decision at the court for the second hearing. And when the jury that constitutes Kela de Pena was unable to reach a unanimous decision on the first day, that was when Kela de Pena decided that she was going to make that declaration to the judge and let him know that she had spoken to a friend about the case and had outside information and that is also a major violation of the court rules you see where this is going but the question is fine it's a major violation but what does it lead to what is the outcome of her breaching that protocol well this is what it is per this it means that they would have to go through the whole trial again yeah they would have to go through the whole trial again and just this past Thursday Kayla De Pena admitted to the judge that she said this but then she turned around when she saw the consequences that came with it to now say that she said it all right but it was a lie she didn't talk to a friend about the case but rather, she lied about talking to the friend about the case because she was depressed and she was also very uncomfortable of law enforcement and she had some financial stress from not getting paid during the trial. So all this led to her making that statement just so she wouldn't have to be put back on jury duty. Do you believe that? <laughs> it's very interesting, right? Let me just sum it up again. So, Kayla De Pena told the judge that she discussed the case with a friend. And that is a major violation. No juror is supposed to do that. And Kayla De Pena, as an appointed juror, knows this. But she told the judge, I discussed the case with a friend. And then it constituted a major violation which in itself derails all the three weeks of trial that they've been on and calls for another retrial of Bestman Okafo to decide on whether he's supposed to still be sentenced to death. So it means that the victim's family is supposed to now go through that ordeal and trauma for a third time by kind courtesy of Kayla De Pena. But then, when Kayla De Pena saw that, no, things were getting heated in her direction because the law was definitely going to deal with her for that, she now turned around to tell the judge that what she told him initially about she having discussed the case with her friend was actually a lie. She lied. And that she lied because she was going through a lot of things which consisted of her being depressed and her also having a discomfort of law enforcement and also facing some financial stress from not getting paid during the trial. Hmm, interesting. Then she would go on to apologize to the court staff and the victims of the family and witnesses for her actions. Because 
what she has done means that she has single-handedly crumbled down the justice system as far as that case is concerned. Imagine the work that has been put in. Even imagine the costs of retaining attorneys to prosecute this case and also defend it per Bestman Okafor's side. Not to talk of the trauma of the victim's family reliving the whole experience. Not to talk of the state's expenses spent. Not to talk of the time. Everything that people have invested in this, in kind, in financial, in finances, in whatever substance. Kayla de Pena has single-handedly rendered all that useless. And let's look at the reasons she gave. First of all, she's talking about she telling that lie because she is depressed. I am no medical expert. I don't know her personally. I can't speak to her depression and I don't want to be unfair to her in that analysis. So I will skip that one. Two, her talking about another reason for her lying to the judge that she spoke to a friend being as a result of her discomfort of law enforcement. Why did she reject the offer when she was offered to be a juror? I don't think it's compulsory that once it's offered to you, you have to take it by hook or crook. I'm sure there's the option for you to turn down the offer. Because after all, there is a large sample of people who are picked to be considered for the jury duty. So if she was discomfortable, she could have just declined the offer. Unless she's trying to imply that she got uncomfortable with law enforcement after she had accepted the offer, in which case it would be a bit understandable, but then it still wouldn't justify you lying, knowing very well that this would be the implication. And then her third reason, that she lied because of the financial stress from not getting paid during the trial. So, I saw a post from another person. I wouldn't want to share that post in my video because I respect the person's privacy. But the person was actually sort of trying to support Kayla DePena on that particular point of not getting paid for jury duty and claiming that when you are appointed as a juror for jury duty, you might also be an employee of another institution. So you have to take some days off from that employer to come and perform your jury duty. And that means that you might be losing some money that you would have earned from your employer if you were at post working, depending on the type of job you do. And at the same time, in making that loss of money, when you are performing jury duty, you are also not paid. So you are sort of losing out. And sometimes you can even get caught up in some forms of risks and all, depending on who is involved in the trial. I don't know about that. But it's very interesting. I don't know if juries in the US get paid or not. I don't even know if juries in any jurisdiction get paid. But these are things that you can see from the get-go or you knew from the get-go as a prospective juror when you were approached to perform jury duty. If you feel that these reasons don't make it favorable for you to accept the offer, you just have to decline. That is my two cents have to decline. You don't need to agree and take on the offer and start playing the role of a risk that is affecting people's lives, the trauma of victims, fans committed into the case by the defendant as well as the one making the claim, funds committed to the case by the state, which could have been committed to other useful purposes. And then you turn around one day and tear the whole case to the ground with this excuse. So, these are my two cents on what she gave us her excuse for doing this. And I think that this is very, very unfair. This is very, very, very unfair. And she went on to still affirm that she was fit to serve. So now she was now in the hot seat because she needed to pay for what she's done legally. There are, rab there, there are ramifications for that. So they called the other jurors who were with her on that jury duty to now testify against Kayla de Pena because now 
she was also being tried for what she had done. And they were there to also make sure that they give their version of certain conversations they heard from her prior to her making that statement, which in fact actually still reflects and relates to what she said and the outcome thereof. Now, when her fellow jurors came, they confirmed that she knew her lie would throw the proceedings out, despite the jury having made up its mind about Okafor's sentence. Other jurors said when they agreed to stop and resume discussions the next day, Depenya wasn't happy. She asked to speak to the judge, and she, about she, before she walked out, she said she was about to make that a mistrial. Depenya told the judge she spoke to a friend about the case causing the mistrial. She admitted that was a lie. She said she was financially strained by the three-week trial and battling depression. So then it begs the question, if Kela Depenya knew that her lie would throw the proceedings out, even though the jury had actually made a decision on Bestman Okafor's sentence, why would she still go ahead and lie? I'm suspecting there could be more to this because bear in mind, Bestman Okafor is on trial for or the unaliving of a person. And if I should just give you a snippet, the person he unalived or is accused of unaliving was going to testify against him the next day. And he decided to unalive the person the day before the, the, the court proceeding. I don't think it's far-fetched to suspect to an extent that maybe somehow Bestman Lukafo indirectly may have gotten to Kela de Pena. That is a possibility I will be glad if it could be investigated into because I don't think it's far-fetched. That makes more sense to me in looking at the actions of Kela de Pena than what she's saying as she just lied because she was depressed. Yeah. So one of her colleague jurors actually said that she knew that this was going to be the consequences. She knew about it and she decided that she would still do this. And they also talked about the fact that she was talking about losing money, not being at work and all. So for me, personally, I think that she did this deliberately. I don't think that she didn't know the implications. Even her fellow jurors allude to the fact that she knew the, 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 the ramifications, but she did it anyway. And I think there could be more to this. This could be a possible case of jury tempering, just that depending on the type of force that was applied on her, she might still be too afraid to come out and see that was the actual reason. So she would find something else to pin it on. That is my suspicion. I could be wrong. Now, it got to the sentencing of Kayla de Pena after she was found guilty of derailing this whole proceeding based on what she did, which was a no-no. She found herself in front of this judge and it looks like this judge was not very happy with her. He was really unhappy with her and it's almost as though he had thrown the book at her. He, judge Bletchman, that's his name. He sternly told Kela de Pena that he wouldn't buy her excuses either and then he sentenced her to the maximum of 179 days in jail and also imposed a $500 fine on her for contempt of court. Now the judge went on to also let her know that she deserved to spend 280 days in jail, one for each day each juror wasted and repay the $200,000 in costs the trial created, but then the law wouldn't allow him to impose that sanction on her. And I think that was rightly said. If not for the law, she should have gone through all that. So as it stands now, the victim's family will have to relieve this. And one of the things that hurt me so much is the reaction of the father of the victim, Rafael Zalvida. His 19-year-old son is the victim in this case, who is suspected to have been unalived by Bestman Okafor. 
And as it stands now, when the state had the chance to finally institute the death sentence on Bestman Okafor, Juro number 370, Kayla Depeña, has single-handedly thwarted all that and brought the proceeding to its knees, meaning that there would have to be a third trial. What do you think about this? Do you think that Kayla Depeña was forced? Maybe there was an external force and she's too afraid to say this. Do you think that this is a possible case of jury tempering? I think so. I think that makes more sense than any excuse she's given. But let's have a conversation in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And let me know what you think about what I've said. Let me know any other information you have about this case I didn't put across. I would really appreciate that. But also, take some time to watch some of our videos and give me feedback on the ones that you watch pair the facts in there and any other information that you'd want to share. I appreciate your support so far and I hope that I'm giving you the quality you deserve coming to my channel. Subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so. Turn on the post notifications, keep an eye out and stay safe out there. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.